of Pillars of Eternity. Super excited to get in a few hours with this. All right, uh, so everybody who's here, thank you so much. Drop me a note in chat if you uh, want to say hello, feel free. If you want to just lurk and not do that, feel free as well. If you're watching after the fact on YouTube, thank you so much for being here and checking it out. Uh, just like all the previous videos, I'd love your subscribes, I'd love your likes, I'd love your comments, all those things would be fantastic, so please, please, please uh, do those things. So, a uh, quick recap before we jump back in. On the last episode, we explored the Temple of Aethys. We picked up two new party members, Adair and Aethelin, Elifaf, Aubrey, what's the name? Aeloth. Aeloth, that's right. Uh, in picking up Aeloth on our team, a bunch of villagers attacked us and we slayed them. Uh, it was real bad for them, but they attacked me, so not my fault. Uh, we found the inn, which is pretty cool, and we learned about a place called Sistanibibida? Katnua. Katnua, that's right. And uh, thank you, Aubrey, for being here for that. And we learned that I'm a watcher. That's why I have weird psychic migraine seances. I talked to a dwarf that was dead. That's pretty cool. I explored a hidden temple, which is pretty awesome. Uh, like Nickelodeon days style awesome. And that's where things are right now. That temple took me about three hours to beat last night. Uh, so who knows what's going to happen now? It could get crazy. The only quest that I have going on right now is to find Casnua. Did I say it right? Cad. Cadnua. It's to find Cadnua and learn about what being a watcher is, because there's a watcher there. So I've got my Dr. Pepper. I've got the game running here. I've got Aubrey on the mic. Hello, Aubrey. Hello. That's uh, X Mulder in your chat screen, but number one in your heart. And uh, maybe Aldi's back later? I don't know. Aldi was hanging out last night, so... Uh, as always, if you guys want to pop in, if you have any suggestions for stuff that I should do or any strat tips or want to just talk about what's going on, feel free. If you want to talk about other stuff going on, feel free. Basically, whatever you want to talk about, talk about it. Let's all be in here together, okay? Thank you to everybody who is hosting and auto-hosting. Uh, actually, we can pop this out on Twitter real fast, too. Let's just do that real quick. Let's just get it out there. Sorry, world. We're going to do this thing. Pillars of Eternity, Episode 3. Maybe killing more villagers. Posted, posted with the mosted. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm oh, sorry, it's just going to take me a second. Feel free to skip the next 30 seconds if you want to. And, ah, oh, crap, posted the wrong dang thing. Post. Uh, see more posts. Post, 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 post. And we are good to go, my frenzies. Let's do this. All right, all right. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and continue here. This puts us right where we were last night when we loaded up or when we, uh, when we saved it all. How's our music situation going on here? What's the music like over here? Not responding. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Not responding? Yes, I don't know. Let's get the, let's load the game up here. Loading, 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 loading. This is why I always feel like I should load the game up before I start playing, so I'm not wasting like five minutes of time as we pop into the next episode. You can fix that in editing. Yeah. I'll edit it out in post. I'm just going to close the shortcut, guys, and relaunch. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, friends. What? Oh, it actually loaded up now that I tried to close it. <laughs> right back. Here we go. Here we go. Yes, 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 yes. There's a title screen. We know that. Thank you. Thank you, Pillars of Eternity, for that title screen. Let's do this thing now. Load uh, POE stream season two oh, or episode two. Boom. Ba -da -doo -doo -doo. I'm gonna turn the music up a little bit. Aubrey, are you also playing Pillars right now? No, I'm still messing around on Astroneer, but I'm probably gonna get on Pillars here pretty soon. Nice. Are you um, are you playing Astroneer in uh, Ace's world or in your own? Just on my own to learn the mechanics nice. and whatnot. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's go talk to Thiel Fallon over here. All right so, then. Nice. As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this man's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you. Reach out to the soul. That's cool. Uh, you see a you see a pennant waving tall and sluggish in the wind, a rising sun embroidered on the banner, the vanguard of a small troop of paladins. The atmosphere is buoyant if restrained, and their armor has not yet been tarnished by the elements. This expedition is fresh, young, filled with zest and zeal. At, at their head stands a commander, awkward and full armor, but determined in step. Despite the excitement of his fellows, he does not smile. There's a twist to his mouth, his countenance grim. He throws up a hand, halting his troop. Silence falls among them, revealing a dark thunder deep and low. He orders them to ready their weapons and spread out. Eyes dart from horizon to horizon, next twisting to see the source of the sound. 
In the distance, dust and lightning rise from the ground as Stygian clouds race towards them overhead. The soldiers stand, only the staccato movement of their breath betraying their nerves. The commander closes his eyes, calling a blessing down on his troop. Invigorated, invincible, they wait as the enemy draws closer, poised to attack. So uh, this guy has a gold nameplate when I look at him. And what that means is that one of the backers for this project, of the 77,000 of them, hey. uh, wrote the backstory for this guy. So when I do that, I can see these little backstories, which I think is pretty cool. All right, All right. then. Who's this person? This is a villager. Hello, villager. Let's see. Yeah, so basically, I haven't done anything interesting in this town other than go to the inn and murder some people. Which I mean, I that's a good start. Yeah, I guess it's actually pretty interesting. What am I trying to talk about here? Let's go talk to this guy. An account of I am... sales. What's that? About? I immediate. I immediately have tips for you. Oh, really? Do not want to know. Yeah. No spoilers. Nope, not gonna say a word. All right. Uh, to Itanu, the Omama man is an, of an impressive build. You know, just some murder. Yeah, just your regular run-of-the-mill murder, not interesting murder. All right, the Omama man is of an impressive build, towering above the countertop. His skin is the dusky blue of the deeper oceans. I gotta get my voice going. His skin is the dusty blue of the deeper oceans, and his thick arms boast corded muscle. Small ears frame a square-jawed face, coated in smeared soot and arcing black tattoos alike. He offers you a broad smile as you approach. Welcome. You're the first new face I've seen in quite some time. What can I do for you? Well, what do you have here? You come to us at a strange time, I'm afraid. The stock's not what it used to be, but we've fine weapons and armor to offer yet, all forged right here at the Black Hammer. You know, the inn is called the Black Hound, and this is called the Black Hammer. What are these people in session? They have the hollowborn people. This is weird. I think this game's trying to tell me that this place is dark and awful. Uh, show me what you have for sale. Oh, no. What happened? We just don't have the supplies. Been expecting the next delivery for near on a week now, and haven't seen a sign of it. Have to expect they were hit by bandits. The road out east is crawling with them. Or my workers ran off with the wagon themselves, maybe to make some coin. To a ton who snorts. As if that lot would dare. Aloth says, He's right about the bandits. The dire situation in villages like this, and the exodus to the cities has created far too many opportunities for unscrupulous sorts. Totodno scratches his jaw. If you happen to be headed this way, maybe you can keep an eye out for a supply wagon. Or my shipment, at least. They'd be cutting through the Black Meadow, I expect. Only good road for it. The Black Meadow, Aubrey, what is this? Themed? Take the Black Road. Stop at the Black Well. Go to the Black Meadow. See the Black Sun. Pick some black dandelions. You had a perfect setup for blackberries. I'm with you. You're right. Black dandelion, 7 of 10. Blackberries, 10 of 10. I apologize. It's okay. You have to give it's your a, first playthrough. You have to give me a black mark. I'm a pirate. Ha ha. As it is, uh, most of our weapons go to his grace, Lord Raedric. And that's as it should be, but it doesn't leave much for outsiders. We just don't have the iron. I'll find your supplies. No, wait. Where was the wagon traveling from? We send the wagon up to Neheimer with the weapons, and it swings round through Log Home and the like to purchase supplies. Shortest route back is through Black Meadow and then north to the wilds. Tuatano shakes his head. Had a trader come through with word they'd made it to Log Home. But I haven't heard a thing since. I had other questions. Sure thing. What can I do for you? Is this your shop? That it is. Been here near on 20 years now. Seen all manner of things over the years. Good luck and bad. But the Black Hammer Smithery still remains. I'd like to see your wares, please. Of course, you won't find finer anywhere else, except for literally everywhere else, apparently. Uh, Azeroth Stiletto. Jeez, that's a nice weapon. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, dumb. Don't want. He has some dice? Oh. Retrain character. I see. Uh, Aubrey, why would I want to retrain a character? Uh, because you might build them in an inefficient way as you're leveling them. Oh, okay. Like, I don't, I don't get rid of the class. I sort of just do the thing. Uh, my understanding is you keep the class, you just, like, re-level them from one. Gotcha. What the heck is... What is an animat? Bronze horn figurine costs 800 copper pieces. Oh, right, value 800. It. He's selling it for 6,000. It just says uses per rest. It just says range 7 meters, summon animat. What the hell is an animat? An animat is kind of like a golem. Oh, cool. So it'll fight for it. Well, it says the value is 800 copper pieces. This dude's selling it for, like, I don't know, 6,000. Uh, is this, like, yeah, OG Fallout Diablo at all? Uh, this is actually made by the same people that made Baldur's Gate. This is going to be a lot like Baldur's Gate. 
but with some really interesting additional depth. Notably, what I love is that the stats that I have determine what dialogue things that I get when I'm interacting with people. Meaning, like, if I have, like, a high lore, which I do right now, I know some stuff that I wouldn't otherwise know. But, like, if my intelligence or my strength were high, I would have other options and new things would come available to me in the game based on, like, what I'm doing. Also, the reputation is dynamic. It isn't, like, a stat that I can see. Just the more good stuff I do, the more people like me. The more bad stuff I do, the more different people might like me and other people might not like me, etc. Pretty great. Uh, okay. Here's a pry bar. I already have a pry bar. I don't need that. Uh, blunting belt. I don't care about all this stuff. Do I care about breastplate? God, it's all so expensive. Should I sell my stuff, I guess? What is this? Dart trap? Eh. I should get rid of this crap that I have in my bag, though, right? Okay, we'll do that. All these stupid shields and bows and stuff. All this is bad. Zorp Sphere can stay. I have so many Zorp Spheres. Yeah, let's we'll trade all that. Trade. Uh, all this awful armor can go. What is this? Scale armor is actually not bad. I guess? I don't know. We'll trade it all out. Get out of there. We got helmets. Uh, I'll check the helmets real fast. We got potions. Caro Golan. User, remove Carol Golan Crash, focus gain, deflection. Made from a sacred and uncommon plant that grows deep in El Glanfoth, Carol Golan is the name given to a mixture, typically used solely for ceremonial purposes or else by warriors going into important battles. So to open one's awareness to one's place in the world, raising one's ability to recognize and react to threats. Okay, cool. I don't know where I found that, but I'll take it. And I also have Potion of Minor Regeneration. Dope. Alright, and I have some journals and some torches, which I'm not going to get rid of, and a wolf hide, which I'm not going to get rid of. And also a whole bunch of ingredients and stuff. And also some moonstones, and ooze plaza. Okay. Yeah, it, it's like a heavily fleshed out tabletop RPG. That is 100% correct. Yes, this is like playing a tabletop RPG. This is... So Baldur's Gate was Dungeons and Dragons. This is Baldur's Gate without the D&D license by the same company who did an incredible job of it. So this is this is essentially just D&D. Is what this is. Aubrey, is that safe to say? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hammer and chisel, yes. Rice, yes. Oh, cop stealing! No! Guys, I'm so sorry. Did not mean to do that. Uh, crap. Um, uh, load game. <laughs> what did you just do? I just stole something out of a barrel I didn't mean to. Whoops, sorry guys. <laughs> My bad. GG. I guess oh, consequences right, or whatever, right? But no. No consequences. Not for me. Shouldn't talk to him on all the stuff. Um, what happened? All right, we already read all this. Da, 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 da. Bring Trump from. I'll find your supplies. You have my thanks. You bring those supplies back, and I'll have plenty more to offer you. A discount to start. Oh, and if you find my workers, tell them to hurry up, and they can take up the farming instead. Travel to the Black Meadow. Get ourselves a quest. Let's see your wares, please. All right, I'm gonna sell all my stuff. All right, let's get back over here. Sell all the stuff. It's all this stuff. I should take up all these crappy weapons that I've had so far. Um, I'm gonna keep the helmets. We're good. Trade all that off. I got 840 copper, Aubrey. What in the world? I get so much money. That's a. Th yeah. Uh, Jane Jaina's lance. Hold the wall. Wow. Unique arbalest. Very slow. Jesus. 22 to 32 pierce damage. Holy cow. Masterwork of dwarven craftsmanship. Is it expensive? Yes, it costs 4,800 gold or copper pieces. That's a lot for me right now. Well, all right, we'll just walk away from this. Sold all my stuff, that's fine. All right, well, I'm not going to steal anything. Talk to the guard here. All right, the guard said that. Hill of Bells, bad news, usually is. All right. If you want to buy something at Swatown, I just should speak to you. I'll go look, up, look at the forge real fast. The bellows sigh into the furnace, and the coals burn brighter still. That's nice. Um, talk to the common man. Oh, hello, I'm just browsing. You're not browsing! You're stealing stuff! I caught you a minute ago stealing hey. stuff. Yeah, that was totally you, wasn't it? Stealing all that stuff. Alright guys, uh, just to save all of us time, like... Uh, there, are, Aubrey, do you know how many gold-plated characters in this game? A lot. Like, would you say like more than a hundred? hundreds or thousands. Okay, I'm not going to read them all. It is more than likely hundreds, but it's it's overwhelming how many I have seen. I'm, I'm not going to read them all. They're just placed in places that they're not story important. I'm going to leave them alone. Yeah, like, it's cool to catch a few now and then, but... Yeah. 
All right, guys, we got ourselves a quest. We sold some of our stuff. That feels good. We got caught stealing, and then we went back in time and didn't steal instead, so that was nice. Still nothing interesting happened, other than going back in time and doing some murdering and stuff. Let's check out the map, everybody. We've got a windmill over here, the smithery. Up here is the uh, Ingroid's house. I don't know what that's about. Let's check that out. Get all the double time, guys. Let's go. I love that this game has fast mode. Right? Baldur's Gate had it, too. It was the best. Yeah. Let's see. Just voice the dramatic parts and characters you really want to. Yeah, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm going to talk to Nonton. Hello, Nonton. This man and woman appear to have been deep in conversation, working at closing two bulging satchels. They move to embrace until the woman notices your approach and pauses. Her smile falls Gods a little. keep you. Can we help you? She looks to her companion, brows for him with confusion. Do you know this man, Nonton? Nonton coughs. Y yes, I, I think we met in the Veilwood. I w warned him about the bear. He inclines his head. Glad to see you've made it. But was there something else you wanted? Oh, man. Aubrey, do you know who this is? I do. Oh, this is the motherfucker who stabbed his buddy in the knee and left his buddy to die. Unfortunately, yep. that bear murdered me, so I didn't get to know that in this in this instance of time. But I know your tricks, Nonton. I'm coming back for you, bud. You two seem to be in a hurry. Yes, I imagine so. We're packing for a trip, actually. I've been meaning to visit Defiance Bay, and... Well, in truth, I think I've had my fill of this town. Nonton reaches to take her hand. It's time for some new scenery, he says. Is there anything you can tell me about Gilded Vale? Only that you'll want to be moving on as soon as you can. You've seen the tree, I imagine, but the rock goes deeper. If you're looking for work, I'd say you have a better chance of it elsewhere. We're headed for Defiance Bay ourselves. What the hell was that voice? What's wrong with me? Leave. Goodbye. You're not going anywhere, people. I'm going to find a knife over here, I think. Bottle of Sonreed is half empty. Uh, F5 real quick. See if they catch me stealing. The Deerwood, part two of the Broken Stone War. I already have the Deerwood, part one. I'm taking it. They can't stop me. I'm taking your potion of spirit shield, your gold, I'm taking your flail. You stabbed your buddy in the knee and got him murdered by a bear. So I don't give a crap what you think. Nonid. What was his name? Nonred? Nonton. No nads? Is this what is this what my role is going to be? <laughs> yeah, you're the, you're the you're the uh, you're the straight man, and I'm the comedic comedic relief. Okay. All right, let's see. There's some more gold people. I don't want to talk to you. Uh, here's a door. Here's this thing. What is this? I found some gold rot shoe. I guess I'll take that. Sure, you druggy. Right. I don't even know what that is. Honestly, it's a drug. Oh, great. Hey, here's some people to talk to you. Nope, step back. Golden panel means I don't need to talk to you. Step back. Whoa, nope, 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 nope. F5, quick save. What's on the table? Ah, some cheese. Dope. Some grain and some beer. You've been caught stealing. Wonderful. Uh, hmm. Load. Quick save. Load. Done. Boop. No steals. Uh, scouting mode is a thing, just FYI. Science Can I steal in scouting me. mode? You are not necessarily going to be seen in scouting mode, which will make it easier to steal. I understand. Oh, is that Deerwood Part 3? Yeah, Part 3. Aw, oh, dang it, they caught me stealing again. Well, I'm certainly not leaving without Deerwood Part 3, jerks. How can right, you? one more time. That's the right. best part. It's like Empire. <laughs> I'll see what I can find. Yeah, yes. you, buddy. They see me, I guess? Well, Aubrey, what does the red eye underneath me mean? That means they see you. I understand. You are readily apparent. Okay. How do I get rid of that? I? Get better at stealth. Hey. I understand. Hmm? Do do do. Certainly. Do do do. Do 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 do. Is there like a distance effect to this or anything? Oh, sweet. yeah. Yeah. Not really seen currently. Get there, get there, get there, get there. Got it. I don't know. I got it? Maybe? Yes, party. All right, I got the thing. Okay. I'm not seeing it. Excellent. That's new from Baldur's Gate. That's great. Rats scurry behind the sacks. All right, cool. Next up, this door. Let's do it. Picked up part three of that book, which is something I'm going to read. I'm going to have an episode where I get all the versions of it. I'm going to read them all, all at once. Let's go up here, guys. It will be a 12-day video. <laughs> really? 
Despite There's, the rain, well, stocks feel dry and stiff as a locust sask. Yeah, Aubrey? There are a lot of books, but I don't think they're as long as, like, Mist or Skyrim. Okay. I read all the Mist stuff. I read all of the Mist stuff. Oh, here's a, here's a cutscene. What's going on here? <clears throat> Swinner. We know there's grain in there, Trumbull. We won't settle for scraps while you grow fat on our crops. Trumbull. A muffled shouting reverses from, from the mill. The first of you drunkards comes to that door and gets a shot between the eyes. Gods hear me, Swainer. I'll put you down like a dog. Come away for now, lads, but we'll be back, Trumbull, and we'll have fair prices, or by the flame we'll have a reckoning. Uh, new task against the grain. Ooh. Ooh. Pillars has puns. They got Joe. Punners of Eternity. No knock on the door. So he'll just let me in. I just open these guys couldn't get in. I just open the door and walk in. Great. Trumbull. An elven man stands before you, his relatively stocky build suggesting a life of labor. His face is pale and drawn and his eyes wide. Behind him a younger man and woman exchange word and glances. The miller raises the club as he enters. He shakes violently ground. Get back if you value your life. Hold on. I'm not here to hurt anybody. Miller hesitates, lowers the club a fraction. Who are you? Is Swainer roping foreigners in this little crusade now? Um I can say a lot of stuff. Thought you could use some help. Those people out there seem pretty angry. Really? Highly as tits could I use a friendly face. I take it you heard some part of what the crowd was asking for. Grains, if you've all got it tucked away somewhere. swindler has been egging that lot on for days now. They've been keeping clear so far. But if things get on like they are, I don't know how much longer we've got before things get messy. Please, if you're not here on his behalf, maybe you could speak to Swainer. He won't listen to me anymore. Just explain that we're all getting smaller rations now. We're all making sacrifices. Hey, I gained 66 experience. Sweet. Uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do, bud. I'd be grateful if you did. He won't listen to me anymore, but maybe you'll have better luck. Tell him we're all having a hard time with it, and we'll be we'll all have to make some sacrifices. We'll be in your debt for it if you can convince him. Alright, that's the thing. And, yeah, okay. Let's talk to this person. Siaru. So it's nothing. Father's a good man. Well, that's yet to be seen. Basically, everyone that I've tried to help in this game has stabbed me in the back. Or been lying, or been lying and stabbed me in the back. I expect to come back and this dude is sitting on, like, a, on a whole chair made of wheat. Where was that guy? Let's check out our quest log real fast. Quest log. Um, against the grain. Resolve the feud between Tumble and Swainer. Likely to be at the end. To the end, Aubrey. To the end. To the end. I'm super exci excited for you to get to this part. Oh, really? Maybe. I'm not going to spoil it for you. <laughs> I may or may not be okay. very excited for this. Are you Swainer? No, you're just a stupid villager. God, get out of there. All right. I feel so bad for these villagers. There's like seven of them. Like, what are they doing, right? They're just sort of standing around. Why? Why are they standing around? Slow day at work. Oh, I guess. Where's the Swigger guy at? There he is, Swainer. Come here, bud. Well met, friend. Don't know who you are and don't much care. Keep walking. We're not here to chat with foreigners. Aloth narrows his eyes. Careful. Looks like they're cut from the same cloth as those rowdies who attacked me. He wrinkles his nose. Smells like it, too. I don't know why he's the Pink Panther, but that's my favorite voice for him. Trumbull says he's been threatening his family. I saw you outside the mill. What was that about? Well, someone fancies themselves a meddler, eh? What's that about? It's about Trumbull thinking he's the king of the town on account of he's got the mill to his name. Dwarf jowls cold over his rage. I'm about him. It's about him barely giving us anything for the wheat we bring him, and then cutting our purses when we need to buy grain. It's about farmers going hungry while some bastard gets rich off their crops. That's what it's fucking about. Now shove off. Maybe I can go talk to him for you. Let's see, what if I buy you all around? Will you talk to me then? Swinder considers it briefly. He looks to the others. Fair enough. You bring us something to wet our throats, and I might be and I might be out field to trade in words. It might be out field to trade in words. Yeah, Alright, well okay, I got beers, so let's do it. I've brought drinks. Hey, so you have. By the flame, I never thought I'd be so happy for a mug of the Black Hound's shit beer. You've lost an item. Three times beer. Gods, that's good. All right, then, you got my attention. What is it you've got to say that's worth a round of drinks? <laughs> You're a drunken menace, and I'm putting you down. Now, let's see. Let's see. Maybe tell, some more, tell me some more about what's going on. 
It's like I said, the miller's in charge of the grain prices. He says they're fair, but I know for a fact that folks like Alphara pay half what we do. And maybe we've been a bit rough with him, but what are we supposed to do? We can't keep paying. We're gonna starve. You think Trumbull's gonna be sorry for us when we do? Maybe I can talk to Trumbull? Look, there's no sense threatening the miller. You have him up against the wall. Maybe you can ask some of the other villagers for help. Maybe I can talk. I'm gonna have to make a choice, aren't I, Aubrey? I'm gonna have to make a different yeah, choice. You will. Mmm. Jesus. Oh, what a hard life having to make a choice. I know, right? Talk. Ha! You think you get through to him when we have him? Man, as thick as a peat bog. I hear he got his soul red. Found his kin used to grow sun red trees for their Adrian lords. Up until then, figured out their side was losing. Explains why his sneeze still ached to bend to whatever lord or lady crosses the road. He'll be holed up in that mill for days, the coward. The dwarf eyes you consideringly. But here, if you want to give it a shot, then good luck. Whoa, you want if you manage it. All right. Welcome. Talk to him again. Uh, goodbye. I guess I'll go talk to him again. I'm gonna go talk to him. We'll see what he says. Exit door. Exit stage left. All right. Let's go to the the windmill again. From windmill to end. And of course, these places are not across the street from each other. Gotta have that active logged in time or whatever, right? So. Oh. All right. Pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter. Here we go. Villager. Run in here. Talk to this dude. Druids have a wide variety of area effects against the spells. All right, cool. Hello. What's up, bud? Tremble nods a curt greeting. You're back. Have you had any luck with Swainer? I spoke to Swainer. I have more questions about this whole situation. Tremble breathes a short laugh. What's to explain? It isn't very complicated. I can't pay top prices for blighted wheat, and I've barely got enough good grain to go around. Swainer's howling after things he's got no right to. Seems like a pretty clean story for a messy situation. Trumbull frowns. It's not. Look, Swainer's always been a rotten bastard. With stores so limited, maybe I save the good stuff for people who deserve it. Alfra, for instance. She's expecting a child. Should I let her starve instead? Do the villagers know about the grain supply? Trumbull looks embarrassed. Some. The innkeeper, for instance. The innkeeper? Aubrey, the innkeeper ran away. The innkeeper's gone. Abandoned his hound. It's better not to worry anyone. I'll be trading for supplies soon enough. If we can just keep things calm until then, we'll be in the clear. The innkeeper? I wouldn't drink the ale, is all I'm saying. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, good. Maybe I ought to go have a talk with Swainer, then. I'd be grateful if you did. He won't listen to me anymore. Maybe you have better luck. Tell him I'll have a hard time with it. Blah, 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 blah. Be in your debt if you can convince him. All right, well, I, I talked well to met, him. Well met, friend. I'm just, I spoke to Swainer. What did he say? He says you're treating the farmers unfairly, raising prices and giving them rotten grain. Of course he does. He's been saying nothing else for days now. The man's delusional. If he wants grain, he'll have to pay for it. What's going on here, anyway? Trumbull shakes his head. Where to begin? Swanders whipped him up into a frenzy, into a froth, going on about the grain stores. Claims I've hidden away most of it. All I do with the grain is sell it. I can't create it out of thin air, and I can't hand it out for free. I pay the farmers for the crops they bring in, and I sell what comes out of the mill. Most of it goes to the Black Hound, on the west side of town, for ale. And Swainer and his lot sure don't mind that part. To take a look at the fields on the way to town, the crops blighted. And most of what I'm getting from the farmers, he gestures, gestures to the Saxon containers, it's gone off, rotted through. I can't pay top prices for blighted wheat, and I've barely got enough good grain to go around. All right, we already read that part. I have no more questions. Good day. Anything else? Uh, not yet. I'll be back. All right, let's go. Back to talk to Swainer. Ugh, I can just murder one of these guys and get on. But no, I'm a good person. I believe that my uh, that my destiny is preordained in this game. That's what my character is all about, and that I will get signs that tell me what to do. I will follow those signs. If some one of these people attacks me, that is a sign that I should kill them. And I intend to do that if necessary. All right, get over here, Goldan. I mean, Swainer. Let's go. All right, Swainer. What say you? Well met, friend. Look, there's no sense in threatening the miller. Well, you have him up in the wall. Maybe you could ask him to the village for help. Swainer eyes you for a few long moments, drinking deep from his mug. Then he sighs. You're right. Things go on like they are. We're just going to end up hanging from that tree out there. Tell Trumbull we'll leave him be. Don't know what we'll do now with the crops failing. Haven't got another trade to think of. Think Pasca needs a hand around the inn? Okay. Report to Trumbull. I feel like I didn't have another resolution to that. Like, I feel like I did the only thing that I could do. Let's see what's going on here. There were a couple of things you could have done, I think. Sure. Let's see. 
No, I guess I could have attacked him, right? Could have attacked him. And there were there were some resolve stuff that I could have done, but my resolve's not high enough. Does it base it on my character stats or the character that I have in the lead in the party? Your stats. Okay, cool. Boom, 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 boom. Let's go talk to him again. Good day, Trumble. stranger. I spoke to Swainer. I've convinced him to leave your family in peace. Why, that's... Really? That's great news! I wasn't sure you'd get through to him. They're out of their minds to drink half the time. Party gained 420 experience. Total quest experience, 552. I owe you a great debt. Here, he pulls a coin purse, from his, coin purse from his hip and pushes it towards you. Today's earnings show my appreciation. You can be sure I let everyone know what you've done for me. Keep it, you're having a hard enough time. You're a generous soul, friend. We'll have to thank you for making it through the coming year. Trace safe travels, and may you find favor with the gods. Alright. Um, task completed against the grain. Excellent. F5. Now go steal something. To whispers and shadows. I'm not going to take his grain. This hey. is mean. Alright, we're getting out of here. All right, we did the little mini quest that happened. What's next? What is next? I think I'm gonna go back and kill that bear now that I can't. I probably can with my party. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go back and kill that bear. Uh, I'm gonna check out Alfred's house first, though. All right. Aubrey, how do you feel about fighting a bear? I feel pretty good about it. I think you yeah, might be I... a little under grouped, but it'll be probably okay. be fine. You say undergrouped as though you know what's about to happen. I actually... Like, I had a full party when I went after the bear. Gotcha. But I don't Spoilers. know if I needed it. Hello, Afra. Afra, a, a dear Woodian woman is standing in front of the fireplace, humming a quiet tune to herself, or perhaps to her unborn child, for she is clearly quite pregnant. She turns her head slightly as Greetings. you enter. Well, finally I was starting to think... Oh, I'm sorry, I was expecting someone else. She gives you a cautious smile. Can I help you? I say, nice cat. Offer smiles brightly. Oh, thank you. She's a sweetheart. Keeps the house clear of mice, too. Who are you expecting? My sister, Kaliska. Oh, no. Aubrey. Yep, you let Kalisha die. Oh, no. Kalisha. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I have to read this out loud. That hurts. My sister, Kalisha is traveling with one of the caravans. She sent a letter before she came. She said she was going to pay her way by working as a guard for the caravan master. She always was a tough one. I don't suppose you've seen her on the road? Or the caravan, perhaps? It's Master Odemans. <sighs> the caravan was attacked and we escaped, but Kalisha was caught in a biolac. Offer covers her mouth with a hand, eyes wide in horror. For a few moments, she can manage nothing but a strangled, voiceless gasping, her eyes brimming with tears. I knew... I told her it was a dangerous path to take. Kalisha was always so certain she could take on any danger. Oh, my poor sister. I'm sorry, stranger. I, I just can't believe she's gone. If only I hadn't called her here. If I hadn't written to her, she might still be alive somewhere. Her face crumples and a solitary tear slides down her cheek. Kalisha mentioned that she thought you needed help. Perhaps I can provide some assistance. God, I could have said quit your sniveling. What a terrible person I would be. Yep. Quit your sniveling. It's just your sister. Bah. Can always have all lost stuff there. Yeah, I know, right? Look, one time I lost a pet. It came back, but still, it sucked. Offer looks at you with some surprise before dabbling in her nose with a sleeve. That's kind of you to offer, but I don't know if I could impose this on you. It's not a small favor. Offer wipes at her tears. Ah, I'm worried about the baby, about the legacy. I told Kalisha as much as I could, but all I know is that for a long time now, every child born in Gilded Vale has been soulless, empty. It's happened to so many mothers, and Lord Raedric, he's exiled all of them, calling it a sign of the gods' disfavor. With my Hathort gone, I don't know... Wait, her, her husband's name is Hathort? Hathort. Surely it's Hathort, not Hathort. Hathort? Hathort. Hathort. With, with my Hathort gone, I don't know how I'd manage if I lost my home, too. I hoped Kalisha could find me. They say Ranga, the old midwife, knows a way to prevent a child being hollowborn. But she moved south to Anslog's Compass two seasons ago. The journey's too far for me. I can't make it as I am. But I don't have anyone else now with Kalisha gone. Please, can you help me? Oh my god. 
I'll think about it if I ever head that way. Like, yeah, you know, if I happen to be there and I happen to see her and I happen to remember that you're pregnant and I happen to remember your kid's going to be born without a soul and I happen to remember that the king of this place is going to kick you out of here and take your home, then maybe I'll do the thing. Yeah, I'll find Ranga for you. Oh, my God. This is the problem, Aubrey. Even if I try to play characters who are mean, I can't. No, like, I can really... Yeah, this is why I'm Alliance on World of Warcraft. I just can't do it. Now's the time that I point out that Alliance are the bad guys, right? In World of Warcraft? Yeah. How? Why? Uh, that's a long story for another stream. Oh, are they like the ones taking over the natural world and stealing it from the, the Horde? Um, xenophobia, attempted genocide. Uh, oh, no. Awakening the dark powers of Sargeras and all of his minions. Uh, okay. Maybe they're just all bad guys, and that's why I don't play World of Warcraft anymore. That could be. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Alfred blinks, eyes wide. You will? Oh, gods bless you. Here, I'll give you a coin to pay her with. You needn't trouble yourself with that. I think it's a drink she fashions of, well, I'm not sure. But it shouldn't be too much of a burden to carry back. She gives you 20 copper. I, I don't need your 20 copper, lady. It's fine. Anslog's Compass is what we call the Lagoon of the South. You have to cross the wilds to get there. That's what keeps me from trying it myself. She clasps her hands together. Thank you again, truly. You'll be saving us both. She sets a hand on her stomach, smiling through her tears. Okay, we have a new quest. And we'll look at her table and see what's going on. The worn dog-eared book is titled Travels Upon the Cell Glass Sea. There's an etched illumination, <clears throat> etched illustration of a vast fend of Leviathan. Yeah, Leviathan is scary. I'm going to talk to the cat. Can't talk to the cat. Oh, hey kitty. I could attack the cat. That would not be nice. That would not be, be nice. You going to bed? All right, guys. I'm saying good night to my wife. Give me one second, everybody. Good night, Amy. Back. Aubrey says good night. Good night. Sorry, stream. One moment, please. No, oh, let's see. Uh, there's definitely an argument for that, Saitama, but I take a much more nihilistic view on it. Like, there are certainly heroes that are genuinely heroes. Just makes for a more interesting story when everybody's bad and people are trying to get past that. To me. Yeah, so I like the orcs, but I don't like the green skin orcs. All right, like, once they came to Azeroth, meh. Alright, we are back. But so back on says... Draenor before they drank the blood. Alright, friends. One sec. Uh, I blame the Alliance for it. Hey, hey. Let's see. Lishkin's origin obviously is the alliance blamed for that. Hey, Saitama. I'm so glad you guys are having this conversation right here. This makes me so happy. This is a place for these kinds of things. Hey. All right, guys. <clears throat> we talked to all the people. We did all the things. We went to all the places. Let's go. Let's go talk to that bear real fast. Just real quick. Let's just just quick conversation. Nothing yeah, serious. Gonna, just wanted to check base. And say hello. That's right. I can at least like like throw uh, a dare against them, right? Um, sure. And be like, hey, hey, Dare, enjoy this bear fight real fast. The Veilwood. Also, I bet you can go kill all those bandits, too. Bet you I can go kill all those bandits. Might be. Orcs always seem like bros to me. That's funny. Alright, it is nighttime. That's a problem for me. I ain't afraid of nothing now. I got a whole party with me. That's right. Whole freaking party. All ready to roll. 
That's right. No, three of us. There's three of us now. Oh, yeah. I, got I forgot wizard. about Ayla. I got my warrior. I got my chanter. All I need now is like a ranged person, like an archer. To do a bunch of arching. Alright, F5. It's bear time. Let's go. Time to bear our teeth and attack. Alright, Mr. Bear. Here's what we're going to do. There's a dead body over there. We're going to aggro the bear. F5. And I'm going to run around and go talk to him. I can't talk while in combat, though, can I? Wait, I can talk while I'm in combat. Oh? Right. Hey. I mean, you, you can talk. Alright, F5. Let's see if we can get this to work. Alright, bud. You're gonna run up here. You, sir, are gonna cast, let's see, missiles here. You, sir, are gonna knock this thing back and stun it. You're gonna run. Alright, we're, we're getting there. Oh, that bear hits real hard, Aubrey. That yep. bear hits real hard. He really does. Yeah, it's a problem. Uh, you might actually have to just help me out here. I'd be happy. All right. Oh, we got this bear. <coughs> we got him. We got him. We're gonna kill this bear. You can do We're this thing. Get We're getting there. Also, I feel really bad for killing oh. this bear. This game feels he, so comfy. Doesn't it? Isn't it super cool if I found him? What's that? He ate someone. That is, in fact, a thing he did. I now have hey. a bear hide, though. And I can check out all the stuff over here. What is this? Cave coral. Nice. What is this? Mice crawl through eye sockets and over femurs. Huh, gross. Alright. What's in the chest? It is a spear. All right, let's talk to the thing. Mm -hmm. All right, I can do my spirit voice. Say, Tommy, you're gonna be super excited for this. Boss spirit. A figure drifts suspended in the musty air of the cavern. Its form and features blur and twist in cascading ripples of incandescence. You feel its energy eddying about your limbs, filling them with a heavy chill. I reach out. You reach out a hand for the spirit. In the moment of contact, you feel as if you have been struck a blow, head reeling as you tumble helplessly into awaiting darkness. Light blooms at the edges of your vision. You feel the sun at your back and the weight of a bow in your hand. You know suddenly that you have come a long way from the veil, hunting deer. Now you are standing before a cavern and the darkness extends far into its depths. Even so, your friend strides out before you his red cloak flapping at his heels. You follow, heart hammering in your chest as he leads you deeper into the cavern. There's a roar like thunder echoing around you. Fear seizes you, casts you, stumbling back towards the exit, towards light and escape. You see a glint of steel, and there's a sudden terrible flash of agony behind your knee. You scream, stumble, fall. Your thoughts are chaos, lanced through with pain. But in a moment of terrible clarity, you see your friend look back from the mouth of the cavern, his dagger daubed in crimson to match his cloak. And then there is a great dark shape above you. And then there is more pain. The vision recedes, and you're thrown back into yourself with seemingly resentful force. The corpse lies at your feet, and the specter lingers. In the span of energy between you both, you feel a sense of questioning, of confusion, of anger. I met him on the road, your friend. A sudden, lashing anger emanates from the spirit. Rage and grief seem to pour from the gleaming figure like smoke. I'll find him, and I'll see that he answers for what he's done to you. For a moment, the spirit seems to burn, bright, and your head fills with a sickly triumph. The spirit seems to weaken with the force of his own exultation, growing fainter and fainter, until you are alone once more. 
Aloft looks at you through narrowed eyes. Are you alright? You seemed lost just now. I'm a watcher. His arched eyebrows recede into his hood. Well, that is interesting. He gives you a sly grin. A sly grin. And I expect that explains how you survived a bioact, hmm? In any case, in any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. Do you know anything about watchers? Only that they're rare, and they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions. As you've just demonstrated. Let's continue on, you weirdo. Hey. Vengeance from the grave. I love it. Saitana, you like those voices? Talk to me, brother. Talk to me about them voices. Let's see. Alright. So I got our tab going on here. I'm gonna go murder some bandits real quick, too. That's a thing I can do now. I got a whole party. Let's go bandit kill him. You have half a party. Yeah, that's right. I got that's close party. enough to a full party. Damn right. Round it up. Round it up. I got a whole party. Let's do some slaying. It's nighttime, too. Nighttime is the right time for murder. Also, your head's on fire. I know, right? It's gotta count uh, for something. Get them all. Gonna get them all. Pokemon. Oh, pick up the wolf pelts. Alright. I saw a dead body up those stairs. That's weird. What? Dead Maybe people can't die upstairs? No, I'm just saying, like, it's. I don't know how to get to it. Ah. Beautiful, JR. Just lend yourself to the voice more. Notably, the way you said echoing really helped the atmosphere. Well, thank you, Saitama. I appreciate that. You sound like a fine critique of theatrical performances. And a touch more salt. So talk to these dudes. The young dwarf tending to the stew looks up startled as he sees you approach. He drops his ladle, ladle spattering stew across the ground. What? The bandit turns. Get him, you dogs, and make sure our new cook don't run off. Help, please, help me. Ah! One of the bandits gives ten for a kick as they pass him, and he huddles. Uh, well, we're gonna murder these bandits, that's for damn sure. Uh, let's see. All right, you actually walk right here. You walk right here. You walk right here. Where did they be? And you cast Cone of Fire. Let's try this out. I walk back here. Yes, I saw into this. Kind of. You all fight this. Uh, you have no spells left, so just do this thing right here. Yep, that dude's dead. <laughs> yep, you're dead. You're not what? How did that outlaw heal himself? He's like a potion? Alright, this guy's gonna die. <laughs> yep, you're dead. Aubrey, these bandits ain't got nothing on me. Nothing at all. It ain't got nothing whatsoever. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. Yep. Murdered him straight gangsta style. We got him. Let's talk to Tenfrith. Hail You're freed, bud. Well met. For the flame, thank you, thank you, thank you. I thought I'd be stuck cooking for these ignorant weasels for the rest of my life. Or until they were bored with me, I suppose. I must get back home. I only hope they haven't hired a replacement. The dwarf looks aghast. Listen, next time you're in Gilded Vale, stop by the Black Hound Inn. I'll let Pasca know just what you've done for me, and I'm sure she'll do right by you in turn. Oh, wait, this is Tenfrith. This is the owner of the Hound, isn't it? He, oh, the Black Hound. Well, he's the chef. Oh, okay. Oh, to be back in my oven again. All right. Well, he didn't tell. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's something. I guess you have to loot all their stuff now, right? I got a vegetable. That's exciting. I got... Oh, I got a rod. Okay. I got some rice. I got some meat. I got some poultry. And I got some silver lust. I don't know what that is. Fish, I guess? Currency. Oh, currency, okay. Uh, I got a, a... The tent is empty, but for a pair of stand cots and the stink of unwashed bodies. Gross. Who wants that? Nobody wants that. What I want is to get up here and loot this body, and I don't know how. Do you want a hint? Uh, hmm. Not yet, I don't. Okay. Perhaps shortly I will want a hint. Well, let me ask you this. Is climbing a thing in this game? Sort of, yes. Okay. 
Aha. The age walls appear to have once encircled the entire glade. Only a small fragment remains, and the stairs leading to the top of the structure have crumbled away. Examine the wall more closely. The heavy bricks are slick with moss, presenting a hindrance to climbing, but the stones themselves seem sturdy enough. Given the right tools, one might easily reach the top. Scale the wall. The crumbling wall is of considerable height, even now, and its uneven surface promises a difficult climb. Who will scale it? Ask Adair to climb up. Adair finds a handhold one upon one of the large stones and starts to climb. Despite a few loose rocks and awkward angles, Adair makes swift progress and then quickly arrives at the top of the wall. Athletics 5. Dope. Once there, Adair, Adair helps you up and over the side. Continue. Cool. Loot the body. I found leather armor, camping supplies, a scrawled letter, and Fulvano's gloves. To the bag! Let's see what the letter says. Or the gloves do, too. Uh, also, I'm sorry, Fulvano, that you died. I feel really bad for you. Um, let's see. How do you know Good. that's Fulvano? Good point. Good point. What is this? Plus two dexterity. Jeez. Wow. That's great. It's pretty good, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pushing weapons that have, like, plus five will, right? Like... Yeah. No, I'm not downplaying it. It's really good. Yeah. All right. I can't put a hat on. <laughs> hey, it turns out firehead person can't wear a hat, Aubrey. Yeah, that's true. Good. It goes on my head. Uh, fun fact. On my head. None of yeah. the deathless can... Or the godlike, rather. None of the godlike can wear hats. Makes sense to me. Uh, Saitama, a hollowborn is a child born without a soul. That's right. Yeah, hollowborn, sorry. Yes, hollowborn children born without souls. It's, it's a real problem. It is. I blame the school. I do too, honestly. They're just not teaching kids these days. Of dexterity plus two. Who do I want to have dexterity? Probably Adair, right? Yeah. Um, you're a chanter? Yeah. No, I care about dex. Yeah, I definitely care about dexterity. That is something that I need. That doesn't change any of my stats. It, change my, it changes my speed to 34, but nothing else. Okay. Um, it's Dexterity helps with ranged attacks in general, I think. Great. So okay. if you were to go ranged, it would benefit you pretty well, I think. Gotcha. Uh, let's go back to the thing. Let's go to see if we have any notes anywhere. Yeah, scrawled letter. I do not think you will ever see this, but you were right, Fulvano. We should have journeyed south together and been safer for it. I would tolerate all the gloating in the world if I might live to hear it. I put myself out of reach of the beasts circling below, but I am done for all the same. I do not think I will rise again. Whoever finds this, pray for me. Perhaps in the next life I'll sh I shall be a trapper of wolves. Dear God. Well, I'm going to be wearing those gloves when I meet Fulvano, and he's going to be pissed off. I guess I'll pick the flower. Yep. And that flower. Hey. hey. How the hell do I get out of here? Climb down. Alright, cool. Is there anything else to grab? Nah. Alright, what else do we need to do here? we got some exploring to do up here. Let's do it. Now that I'm not afraid of death, everything is wonderful. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you've got fast mode active. Everything is awesome. Anything going on here? Oh, here's where I could like I could see the camp from above. I can like see what's going on and be like, oh, there's a camp down there. Better avoid it. But not needed now. Ruins, camp, Zorup camp. I already did all the stuff at the Zorup camp. Didn't I? Yeah, I did, I did all that, so. I'm just getting on here. Are dragons important to the world, or are they just big baddies? Uh, Saitama, I do not know. I have not heard of a dragon in this world, and I've never played the game before. I don't know anything about it. So, basically, they could be, but I have no clue. And I'm not going to uh, say. Yeah, and I've asked Aubrey for absolutely no spoilers of any kind in any way. Oh, there's a folded note inside the tent where this dude was. What does the folded note say? What say you, folded note? Oh, these books are just going to go into my, my chest, by the way. By the way, I love that I just carry around a treasure chest and that it's freaking enormous. Absolutely love that. I can carry everything I ever want in that chest. Oop. Oop. All right, where's that folded note at? Uh, these things. Folded note. My dear Naunton, please be safe. Know that whatever happens, I love you still. Yeah, okay. That's right. Why do we need that? 
Hey. I guess I was supposed to get that before, but okay. Let's go. A uh, gilded veil, a gilded veil, gilded veil, gilded veil, gilded veil. Here's my little Tyrion, by the way. Popped all. Boom, boom. Tyrion Lannister. Purchased at Collected Comics and Games. Purveyors of fine comics and games worldwide, or at least DFW area wide. Oh, we have an eBay store, so yeah, worldwide. W worldwide. Let's see. Uh, I need to go to Ingroid's house. Let's go. Aubrey, we're about to have a showdown with old Nodded. No intent to spoil anyone. Of course, want to know. Some worlds make them super present. Looming god figures. Always interested to see how each rider treats them. Yeah, Saitama. I mean, you know what? Why don't you stick around for the ride with us, man? We'll find out together. Um, I would I would love to share that moment with you because I love dragons. Like, if you have not read uh, the Timurare series. Aubrey, are you familiar with the Timurare series? I am not. Oh, my gosh. So the Timurare series of books is essentially a story about a captain in the Napoleonic Wars, only if there were enormous, incredibly intelligent dragons in the world, too. It is unbelievable. So, like, there's these amazing battle scenes of, like, dragons on, uh, like, on um, Age of Sail ships, and they just fly around and fight. It's incredible. And the, the writing is unbelievable. And Timurare is this dragon who is incredible. They're great. They're great, 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 great. Gotta read them. I like it. I'll look into it. So, like, Tom, if you... You know, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna find that link right now and put it in the chat. Uh, one sec. They're making a movie of it, too, but uh, this is it. It's Naomi Novik. She's a, she's a wonderful author. Um, absolutely wonderful author. Yeah, here we go. League of Dragons is the final novel and is out now, I think. I need to read that. Uh, Timuraire. Yeah, you should read that. That's It's pretty dope. All right, here we go. About to ask for that. There you go, Saitama. You got it, bud. You got it. I got them all on my Kindle. All right, open the door. F5. Cut 5. We're going in here. Why am I not going in? I can't go in. You must gather your party before venturing forth. My whole party's right here. What's going on? You must gather your party oh. before venturing. Let's go. All right, here we go. All right, Naunton. Hail, traveler. More like really nonsense. Yeah, I know, right? I know what had really happened in that bear cave, Naunton. The color drains from Naunton's face. I don't know what you mean. I told the truth of it. Are you accusing him of something? Angroid looks at Naunton, touching his arm. This is about the accident. We're both grieving Pearly's loss, but it was a wild animal's doing. Naunton shakes his head minutely. You see a tremble on his hands. What would make you suggest such a thing? I could say I had a vision in the cave. I saw Pearly's lost moments as he lived them. I saw you cut, cut him with his knife. Or I'd say, why did you do it? He was your friend. I'm not going to tell him I had a vision, because like in this village, that'll get me murdered. I'm just going to say, why did you do it? He was your friend. Nonton hesitates, and his expression darkens. My friend! He was a cruel enough man to his friends. You didn't know him. You wouldn't defend him if you did. His hand falls to his sword belt. Nonton, wait! Ingrid raises a hand. I don't know what you saw in that cave, but it isn't what you think. Pearly, my husband, he was as much a beast as that bear. I tried to leave the first time I suffered his temper. Oh, no! Nonton! Naunton is messing around with Pearly's wife, Ingrid, and she's, she's messing around back. Oh my god. Pretty uncalled Aubrey. for. We found ourselves our first dun 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 love triangle. Right here. All right. I tried to leave the. Oh my god. Did he think he, th he, th he did it on purpose? He took him to the bear cave and then cut his knee to kill him so he could run away with Ingrid. That's oh what I god. thought, I think. Oh my gosh. I tried to leave the first time I suffered his temper, but he wouldn't have it. She looks away, expression pained. Naunton, he... We met, and I knew I'd found someone special, someone kind, who cared for me. Please, all we want is to leave this place, to start somewhere else. We... She looks down at the satchels. We have some coin, saved up. You can have it, if only you'll let us go. And look at her. Oh, God. <sighs> Jesus. Aubrey. Yeah? I'm in a strange place I've never been before. I've got a jackass elf who's basically a bourgeoisie dick to everyone around him that I've already murdered some people over. I've got um, a dare who calls himself number 19 because the whole town wants to hang him anyways. I'm not exactly tied to like the law and order of this town, and I haven't even met Lord Rager yet, right? Like, who, by all accounts, sounds like a jackass. So, I'm not particularly inclined to, like, hand these people over to justice because at the very least I don't really care about the justice here because they're obviously like hanging people that I would prefer were alive 
um, even for selfish reasons, notably that dwarf, because it helped me out with a lot of stuff that she can't now because she is dead from, you know, having been hung in a tree for being helpful. Um, so to that degree, I don't particularly want to just turn these people over. But here's the question. Do I want to take their coin? 